hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today we have a very detailed nail art tutorial on this set right here so if you want to see how i got this look then just keep on watching All right, so first things first, we are going to start by pushing back her cuticles. As you can see, she has been growing out her nails for a long time. And um, we do have one that just recently broke right there. So sad. But um, yeah, so we are just going to push her cuticles back. So next I'm going to use this um, cuticle bit and right now I have it on forward um, at about like 4 RPMs and we're just going to go on one side of the nail plate and then after we do that I'm going to put it on reverse and then I'm going to go on the other side of the nail plate just like that um, to kick up that you know dead skin cuticle area up and again whatever you want to call it we have to lift that up because if not then we can get possible lifting and we don't want that we don't want that at all so yeah get that dead skin off of that nail plate and dust it off so now i'm going to go in with my medium sanding bit and we're going to go around that cuticle area a little bit more and then we're going to remove the shine off the entire nail bed. Um, you don't really have to go, you know, super rough with this. You don't want to, you know, create any rings of fire or make the client uncomfortable. You literally just want to further clean up that uh, cuticle area and remove the shine off of the entire nail. Um, that will also help to prevent lifting and um, further, you know, prep the nail for whatever enhancement you put on. It looks a little, you know, crazy because I'm it's sped up, but it's I really don't go that hard on this part like at all. So here, this is completely optional. I know some people don't like to or can't um, cut the cuticles, but personally, I like to because it just looks a lot better and um, I'm very comfortable with it. I have not had anyone say they got an infection or anything like that from me cutting their cuticles. I know there's like a thing going around on TikTok and whatever. But, um, yeah, I don't cut unnecessary stuff. I just cut, you know, the extra skin that's right there. Because, you know, a lot of people don't keep their hands moisturized. And it just, it looks better when you just cut it right on off. So after that, like I said, we are going in with the gel eggs. So right here, I am sizing her up and making sure that these sizes fit her nail beds plate to plate. I mean, not plate to plate. Side wall to side wall. And um, it is covering up her natural nails. So um, if her if your client's nails are like shorter on the like shorter side, like her index finger, then you know it'll be a lot easier. But she wants to preserve her nail bed, her uh, natural nails. So you know, I go the extra mile to make sure that it's covered up as much as possible. So here we have to etch the inside of the nails and I go over the um, very bottom part of the nail as well so that when I adhere it, um, it'll give a more, you know, a flush look at the cuticle area and I won't have to do that much filing afterwards. And I'm just using a, um, a STF bit 
So here I am setting up my supplies that I would need. I got my primers, I got my extend gel, and I have my gel, um, my light. So here I just take a little bit of acetone because I do not have an actual dehydrator, but it basically does the same thing. And I'm gonna use that Mia Secret primer first. Um, you can use the Young Nails Protein Bond or just another like um, primer that, you know, your favorite primer, whatever you have. But this is the one I have right now. And then I'm going to go in with the No Lift Nails Primer because that primer works like really good. Like I just started using this not too long ago, but I definitely see a difference. Um, it does stink. I do not like the smell of it, but you know, I wear a mask, so it's not that bad for me. But I still smell it through, I still smell it through the mask and... It's, it's, it's not a pleasant smell, but she works. So I'm gonna stick beside her. So now I use a small layer of um, the Extend Gel to basically um, prep their natural nails. Before I was just using a regular uh, gel base coat but I find that using the extend gel as you know like a base coat works a little better To cover her natural nails since they're so long, I did have to like kind of play with it because as you can see, I didn't put enough at first and it didn't go all the way down. So I applied a little bit of pressure and I like scooped up the rest of the extend gel and then I tried again, I added a little bit more in the nail tip and then I added some on her actual natural nail so that we can get that smooth, um, see, that smooth application. And I did have a little spillage, but I take my cleanup brush and a little bit of acetone, and I just remove it on both sides before I cure, so that when I go in to file afterwards, I'm not over filing around the cuticle area. And to, um, I'm gonna keep showing you guys, just so that y'all can get the hang of how I apply my gelix and her um her nail on this finger was crooked and I tried my best to like make it straight but since her nails are so long it was kind of hard to um achieve that but yeah you want to start with the nail like flush like lined up at the cuticle area don't push down yet make sure it's like touching the cuticle area and then you want to push down from there Instead of, you know, like, putting the whole nail, like, flat completely on the nail. Start at the cuticle area with, like, the nail pushed up. Y'all seen it in the video. But, um, yeah, that's how you uh, prevent any air bubbles. Now, sometimes I'll still get air bubbles depending on, like, the shape of their nail. If I'm using sculpted or natural or anything like that. But see how, like, you know, y'all saw that? How I started at the cuticle and then push down yeah that's that's the trick so here I have this like handmade um, sizing tool or whatever and lipstick shape is kind of tricky to do but I basically like saw I don't know how to explain this but like yeah it was it was tricky to do I'm not even gonna try to explain it <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to explain it because I don't know what I was really doing. Like, I guess like, it depends on how you like size your tips. Cause this is like a grid. So I just use like different points on the grid to determine where I want it to cut. But if you don't have something like that, I don't I don't know what to tell you sis. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna go in and file the nails. Usually I use a 80 by 80 um 
file, but I didn't have any more, so I just used this. I don't even know what grit this is, to be honest. But I just used this random file. It wasn't random. It was definitely clean. But it's just not what I normally use and just, you know, what I could find quickly. And this normally isn't the kind of buffer I use either. I normally use the um, the all orange buffer. Hopefully I know what I'm talking about because I don't know the grit or anything. I just know what it looked like. But yeah, so you want to or um, buff the surface of the nail to remove that shine and make them all smooth. And then I'm going to go in with that same STF bit and just clean up the cuticles. And like I said, um, when I was, you know, buffing or etching the nails at first before I'd hear them, that step just makes this part a little bit easier and it makes it um, look more flush to the natural nail bed than if you don't. And I just recently started doing this um, after seeing someone else do it on an Instagram um, tutorial or reel or whatever. And I really like it. These are the colors I'm going to be using for my nail arts, thanks to iGel Beauty. And before I did this, I did use a manicure brush and some alcohol, and I cleaned up all the dust. I just didn't show that. So yeah, we're going to go in with these colors and just start um, uh, with our base. I do use a little bit of acetone to clean around the nail if I do get spillage onto her cuticles or um, yeah, like around the nail. And I did learn this in school as well. It helps um, like with the application of the gel polish if you start midway at the nail and then go up and um, do the cuticle. Um, my teacher taught me that in nail school and ever since then I just, that's just how I've always applied my gel polish. And as you can see, I am using my, um, my pinky and resting it on my other nail just to get some extra balance and um control the brush a little bit more than you know if i wasn't balancing on my other hand yeah i just love this color as a french tip base coat like it's so natural and so pretty and it's literally the best like i i don't use anything else i don't care what anyone says I wanna know if you're getting a French tip, you're getting this color. I don't I don't really care what you say. <laughs> Cause it just looks so good. Like, why would you want any other color? Hello. free game too it's free game like free game all you all i would like for you to do is subscribe let me know you appreciate my free game by subscribing these powders right here are um glow in the dark pigments i use it to thicken up the gel polish so that i can draw with it easier um you can like if you don't have any powders like this you can just use a clear acrylic powder and that will help give you a um, a thicker gel so that you can draw and like get smoother lines and uh, more opaque lines. So 
so yeah i'm just gonna draw the base for the smiley faces and fill them in and to be honest when i am doing a freestyle um as you guys saw um a little bit before on the left i did have like a collage of different things that i wanted to try kind of like a mood board um that's usually what i do with my freestyle designs i'll have like different stuff that i want to try um different mix match designs and i'll basically just go from there some stuff will be you know off the top of the dome some stuff will be like oh i want to try that you know specific design and i'll just like you know throw it in there but a mood board is like will be your best friend when you're doing like mix match or freestyle designs at least it's my best friend in like because i know you know there's a lot of stuff that a lot of different designs that i want to try and stuff like that so that's why i really love doing mix match freestyle designs like this so that i can you know try those different designs that i've been wanting to try and my client, Ali, she always lets me freestyle. Like, she is my favorite client. Like, she, I, I, you're probably not supposed to have favorite clients, but I definitely do. Like, she always lets me do what I want. And it's just amazing. Like, it's heat every single time. Like, how can you not have a favorite? Hello? So, yeah. Ali is my favorite. I kind of feel bad, but not really because she let me do what I want so yeah she has a special place in my heart After I applied the white polish, I didn't cure all the way. I flash cured it for about 15 seconds. And then I'm going in with the same glow in the dark pig pigments. And I am creating a, I don't know what to call this. <laughs> I don't know what to call this. I really don't. Um, kind of like a patchwork. I don't know what to call this, y'all. I'm just like putting the colors there. And since these aren't like actual pigment colors and they're more like just glow in the dark powders, they are kind of um, light and then kind of sheer as opposed to like actual pigment, if that makes sense. Like if this was a pigment, I wouldn't have to, you know, have so many layers. But since it has that glow in the dark um, powder, since it is a glow in the dark powder, um, I had to, you know, pat a little bit more. But I'm not mad at it. I'm really not. Because it still turned out cute. It's giving, like, aura, tie-dye vibes. But I don't want to say that. And it's, like, not really what it is. I don't know what it is. I just saw a picture and I was like, I want to do something like that. So, yeah. I'm doing it. <laughs> And on this part, don't be afraid to like overlap the pigments because like you want them to like mesh together and actually look like one piece instead of it, you know, having a little bit of white space in between. that all off and there's that so now i'm gonna go in with some blooming gel this is also by eye gel and she is very loved hello look at that bottle but yeah um blooming designs are literally the easiest funnest and so cute like you just use your dotting tool 
and use different colors and just do whatever you want. Like, it's so easy and so cute. So, yeah, I'm just going in with a bunch of different colors and creating whatever design I feel like it. But the key to um, using Bloomy Designs is to do one or two nails at a time because you don't want one nail to be super bloomed or you don't want to like do them all at one time and then one nail be like super bloomed while the other one is still looking like barely bloomed at all. So you just want to work um, in small segments when you are doing blooming designs and work fast. So using this 4D gel um, I got this off of Nail Labo. I will leave this in the description box because this is literally one of my favorite nail products. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use that gel to make a swirly design and excuse my hand, but you get the idea. Um, I say um so many times. It's whatever. So yeah, I'm just going to make that swirl out of the gel. This, when I tell y'all, like, y'all need to get your hands on this. Like, this stuff is so good when it comes to the um, 3D designs. Like, I don't know what other people use. I really don't. Um, but I love using this. Like, it's just so good. And, like, the more you put on there, the, like, higher it'll go not the higher it'll go like the more 3d it'll be or whatever and it's just so good like it's so clear it's so good <laughs> that's all i can say about it so yeah what am i gonna do right now oh okay so on the aura tie-dye patchwork whatever you want to call it Excuse me, I was definitely just yawning. On that nail, I'm going to do a black and white marble design. So this is me prepping for that. And honestly, I do feel like I like swirled it too much because it wasn't giving what it was supposed to give at first. So like that part, I did way too much. Like I did way too much. I was really showing out, but it was cute at the end. It was cute. I just had to go back in and fix it. But see, it like swirled too much together. And I didn't want it to look like that. Like, I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen of what I was going for. But like I said, we fixed it at the end. At the end of the day, it was still cute. But yeah, at first it was not doing what it was supposed to so i just got my liner brush and i just you know made my own swirls swirls and curls in the twirly world <laughs> i don't know i don't know don't don't even pay attention to that but yeah and then i went in with the white and we got some more swirls in there and then it was like somewhat doing what it was supposed to. She was cooperating. So here we are doing a zebra moment. And when I tell y'all zebra designs are literally the easiest and cutest. Like they're just lines. Like kind of messy lines. Like imagine drawing like Cheeto puffs or something. Like y'all know how like Cheeto puff, not Cheeto puffs, the um, crunchy Cheetos. Like, I know how they're, like, imperfect and, like, wiggly. Like, that's that's the idea you want to have when drawing these. Like, look at that. That was just so easy, and it was so cute. Like, what the frick? So, these um, clays I got off of Amazon, I will leave the link in my description. And I just mixed those two colors and um, placed it flat on the nail. Now, I'm taking my dotting tool and making some holes in the clay. 
and I'm pretty sure y'all have seen this design um, on Instagram. There's a specific artist, I can't think of their name right now, but there's a specific artist that I got this from. I'll put their name on the screen, and um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I did do this on myself, like on all fingers, and it was so cute, but yeah, I really wanted to incorporate that um, design in this nail set. So here we are adding more Crunchy Cheeto Zebra Lines. <laughs> more Crunchy Cheeto Zebra Lines. Because why not? Because it's spring. Because we're trying to be colorful. We're trying to be trendy. We're trying to be hip. We're trying to be mix and match freestyle divas. Okay. And... That's what we were getting with the crunchy Cheeto zebra lines. She ate them up. She ate them all the way the fuck up. And that's on period. That's on game. That's on phone now. Yeah, you see it. You see it. You see the material. You see it. So we are going to do the aura um, tie-dye design again so um prep that nail and then i'm gonna go in with the acetone and clean up all that extra spillage i just did i don't know why i played like that but we're just gonna clean it up with some acetone and we're gonna act like it never happened this time it was kind of like a um ombre look I was going for at this point um I wanted to have the same like type of design but not the same exact design if that makes sense so yeah I was kind of like like an ombre rainbow type of situation instead of like the patchwork situation I did on the other nail um yeah she she had some structure to this one <laughs> if that's what you want to call it <laughs> so yeah we started with that green on one side and then we're going to blend in the blue around that kind of like the um the rainbow saying, and we're going to deepen that up then after that we're gonna go in with the pink and really push her in there And again, with the black and white marble, we're just going to swirl that on top and go back in with the black and white to give it more swirly whirlies. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the I don't even know what you would call that like my friend said it looked like a honeycomb so we're just gonna call it the honeycomb design or like I don't know it looks like something like in the sea I don't know I don't know I really don't y'all leave a comment below what you think we should call this even though it's my it's not my 
original design i just don't know what to call it so what what would y'all call this because it does look like a honeycomb it really does or like something like spacey i don't know or underwater that's the complete opposite but whatever again with the blooming design this nail honestly was my favorite like it was my favorite from the colors to the Swarovskis y'all gonna see at the end it was just like giving everything it needed to so yeah again with the blooming this time we're gonna start with white and honestly just a little tip for when you do um blooming designs putting white first and then adding the colored dots um after it really does something to your soul like it just looks so good I don't know I don't know why but like the science is sciencing and I just really love putting white first and then like the color on top <sighs> just looks so good like y'all gonna see like when it spreads out oh my gosh it's so cute look at that already like eat 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 real good <laughs> it's so cute like the just the way it spreads and like make all the other uh, whoop, 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 make all the other colors like look so good what the frack look at that and then it's like a shellish oh my gosh it's just so cute obsessed um what was that that was the young nails um overdrive gel paint pod whatever you want to call it um i used to love these like i used to love the young nails pods like that honestly i have stopped using them and i really want to try the nails by dev um pods i just have to get around to buying them but i tried it um a former nail tech of nail tech friend of mine let me try hers and it was really good i actually really like the nails by dev one but i just need to get myself one well not one but like the collection i really want the collection but i'm definitely going to start with the black one first but yeah here we are adding a little bit more detail with these smiley faces and giving them a little blue outline y'all these spikes did everything it needed to to my soul like i have been wanting these for a while and i was just so so excited to use them on my good sis ally like that's why we love clients who let us do whatever we want because then we can use stuff like little mini spikes like there are not a lot of clients who will let me do this yet yet but the fact that she did and the fact that it looks so good it was just like so satisfying to me now they are tricky i don't know if it's like because of the glue or like the amount of glue or like the way i put them on but they kept sliding and it was really getting on my nerves but when i tried this um again i i kind of did it like one by one or like few by few instead of doing the whole thing at once um yeah if you're using this combo like i said i don't know if it's the glue or the amount of glue but it was it was tricky it was definitely tricky and i tried to flash cure it to get it like a little thick so that it would stay but like still be movable but they just they just cured that fast so i was like okay maybe not and you you would have thought i would have learned my lesson on this now but i didn't i didn't i did the exact same thing and they kept moving but it still turned out cute so it's whatever it's whatever and i just kind of like popped them up on my hand or with my thumb to like have them stay in place so yeah 
that's that on that. Piercing time. These piercings I also got off of Amazon and they will be linked down below. Um, I I wanted I was gonna cut this part out because I'm just like y'all don't really need to see me, you know, actually do this. But I kind of want to leave it in so y'all can see like the process I go through with my mix and match freestyle designs. Um, you can like completely customize these. Of course, you can just like find a different or find the same size and, you know, change the balls to like give it a more customized look and, um, you know, play with it around, play with the placement, see how you want to place the actual piercing on the nail. I kind of went back and forth for a little bit, but I decided to um, adhere it just going straight across. But yeah, um, I'll insert a picture of another way that I played with these piercings. Um, of course, these are Ali's nails again, because like I said, she let me do whatever I want. But um, yeah, you can like get super creative with these piercings. Like you don't have to use them exactly how they come. You can take like both of the like colorful balls off and just use the silver balls. I've done that recently with a um an all chrome set but here i'm just placing the rhinestone glue this is the mccart rhinestone glue it actually works really good y'all i love this glue like and it's only ten dollars on amazon it's easy to get it works really good go get you some sis right now but yeah i'm just using these swarovskis to add a little bit of bling these specific ones i got in the packages that used to be at um at michael's they don't do that anymore um but you know i'm pretty sure it's still like wholesalers who still have swarovskis or whatever you know rhinestones you want to use i just wanted to use rhinestone or swarovskis on my girl ally because she deserves the best for being the best client <laughs> Well, they were so shiny and so freaking cute like look at look at them just shining like not even really doing nothing just shining 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 yeah just shining every angle shine 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 everybody loves the sunshine everybody loves the diamond shine <laughs> child please but yeah, we're just giving that a quick flash here as I um, finish adhering before I put that hand in the lamp just so that they don't move because that's not what we want. And to give these... Um, bigger charms some extra sec security i'm going to go back in with more glue and kind of like encapsulate them with the glue um especially these spikes because i haven't used them before but i definitely wouldn't want them to like fall off and like you can't find them or something and you end up stepping on it or something like that you know like nobody wants that so yeah, we're just gonna top coat them and we are pretty much done. Top coating is like the easiest thing ever, but I just wanted to show y'all this to show how I um, top coated that honeycomb barnacle space piece, whatever you wanna call it, um, to like really get in the holes and crevices of that. Just a reminder to not top coat your stones. You want that shine to last and, you know, actually shine. So please do not top coat your crystals. And this is the finished look. Finally, we are at the end of the video. If you enjoyed watching this, 
and if you stayed all the way to the end please give me a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to see more nail art videos and i will see you guys in my next one bye stay sweet and stay blessed and here's a little bit of thumb action yeah 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 y'all see why that one my favorite right yeah yeah look at it shining look at it shining look at it shining okay bye guys <laughs>